Hey guys, I have my phone on the selfie stick and the selfie stick's on the floor propped up and leaning on the door to the balcony. So, I don't know how well this is going to work. I feel like in the middle of the video the thing's just going to fall over and it's going to be awful. But we will see. I started out trying to put it between my legs and holding it, but it was really shaky and I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm wearing this really cool Avengers shirt. And it's so annoying because I have so few uh, like sexy yet also nerdy shirts and it really bothers me. I have a ton of nerdy shirts and I have a ton of sexy shirts, but it's very rare that they come together. Uh, this is one of two Avengers shirts. Well, the other one's actually Captain America. But this is one of two shirts like that that are um, kind of tank toppy. But this one, it, it's like too tight on the neck and then it's like baggy on my waist and tight on my boobs just like every other you know issue that I have with every shirt that's why I like shopping at Abercrombie and Hollister and Gilly Hicks because they have a certain type of material that's really stretchy and it's it's nice it fits my body very well because it'll stretch as much as I want on the top and then you know constrains my waist as much as I want to so it's pretty cool Also, they have a lot of awesome jeggings and I love jeggings I haven't worn jeggings in a while because uh, Jay says they make me look silly but um he says I need to have really really skinny legs for them and since I'm uh, one of those people that always has curvy legs and butt, like, and I'm not the skinniest I've ever been. Uh, it kind of looks weird, and I guess, you know, I agree with him, it probably does, but I think that it's really comfortable. Um, anyway, today I'm going to talk about, uh, jealous women, because that was one of the topics that was, uh, brought up in the comments, and I love doing topics that you guys bring up, because if I run out of topics, I have you guys. Or if you suggest it, that means that it's the most interesting. And once again, I've done a minute and a half intro that has nothing to do with the topic. But uh, I apologize for that. At least I'm not like Trisha Paytas. Every time I feel bad for doing a two and a half minute intro that has nothing to do with the topic, I remember Trisha Paytas who does only one minute of the topic and 49 minutes of something else. And then I remember Toby Turner who has pictures of girls in hot tubs when there's nothing to do with girls in hot tubs. And I'm like, I think I'm on the right track of how YouTubers are supposed to be. I think it's fine to have the intro with what I'm doing with my life and then go on into the topic. But uh, anyway, someone wanted to know how I deal with uh, jealous women or jealous women staring at me or jealous women, you know, doing something in spite of me. Um, and I haven't had a lot, like, I feel like there are more uh, beautiful women out there who have had a lot more experience with this because uh, they probably, you know, steal someone's boyfriend or get involved with someone's boyfriend, but that's only happened to me once. Uh, I'm not really a boyfriend stealer at the same time. I don't, it doesn't go against my morals. I have a very hard time sympathizing with the monogamous lifestyle because I can't empathize with it, if that makes any sense. Like, I don't understand basing trust on sex. If sex isn't supposed to be the most important thing in a relationship, then why are we saying that, oh, don't have sex with someone else? Like, why would you make such a stupid rule up that makes no fucking sense that you can't actually achieve like I will never want to have sex with someone else oh me either okay let's stick to it wait I actually will want to have sex with someone else but when I do I promise I won't do it why not I don't understand if it doesn't actually mean anything and it's just like having fun and you just want to do it why would you not support your partner doing the things that they want to do instead it turns out that a lot of marriages are based on uh, distrust and not telling each other things and not being able to say god that girl's hot without getting slapped by your wife I think that that whole that dynamic is just fucking terrible to me. I want to be 100% honest, and I think there are many other ways to build trust other than knowing that your boyfriend isn't going to sleep with someone else because you're too insecure to know to like deal with the fact that that might be happening, and you're wondering is she hotter than me? Is she better in bed than me? Is she gonna is he gonna leave her for him? I feel like that is the ultimate basis of trust, knowing that the person isn't going to leave you for someone else because they love you more than that other person. Love is what it's supposed to be based on, right? Not like looks or sex and that's what everyone always you know bullshits out of their mouth so why don't they actually prove it by showing how little sex matters to the relationship or at least having enough sex that you don't want to you know need to get it somewhere else because you're actually not having any and it's important sex is important and you should be having the most fun with your wife or the most fun with your husband but it shouldn't be like I can't have sex with someone else just like I can't eat dinner with someone else that doesn't make any sense it's just something that your body needs and desires biologically and you should at least support the idea of your husband being like I would really want to bang her and then you being like well I'll think about it but you know it makes me a little insecure would you mind not doing it and then he's like oh I guess you know sure because I love you and I love you more than this would pleasure me but it certainly would pleasure me and being honest about that anyway that's a little bit off topic um, I have a lot of ideas about uh, monogamy and why it doesn't make sense to me in my life and why it shouldn't make sense to a lot of people because of the way that marriages fall apart because of it. Um, but that's uh, another topic for another video. Um, 
So it's hard for me to morally say that I wouldn't steal someone's husband or I wouldn't have sex with someone's boyfriend or husband because I can't feel the despair. Like, the only problem with that is that someone breaches someone's trust, but why did you make that, that promise of trust in the first place that you know you're not going to be able to keep because you're going to want to do these things or, like, you end up doing these things? It's just, like, women get pissed off about the actual sex more than they get pissed off about the breach of trust. Trust me, it's very obvious there. It's like, oh, that fucking whore, and then they fucking hate the girl, and they don't, like, actually address the issues that they have in their own marriage, so I'm like, yeah, you know, whatever. If I don't know the girl, like, if it's not my best friend or my friend in general, and... I don't know that person, it doesn't really affect me emotionally to do that to someone because call me a bitch or not, it just doesn't make any sense to me and so I would definitely do it if I really wanted to do it. Um, and one time I almost did do it. So let's start the stories. Uh, when I was younger, like I told you guys in the bullying and confidence video a couple weeks ago, I, um, I had a bunch of girlfriends who were uh, less than popular, less than considered beautiful or whatever, and they were really close friends to me. And then when I uh, got really popular on MySpace. Yes, I had a MySpace phase when I was like 15 to 17 where I was lying that I was 18 and posting a bunch of sexy, not as sexy as my modeling photos and not as sexy as the pictures on Instagram that I take now, but they were sexy photos in like bras or lingerie or something. And I was saying that I was 18 at the time uh, on MySpace. And I had like 60,000 followers and that was a lot for like a 15 to 17 year old girl in high school. And uh, some girls started getting jealous I guess I can only surmise that it, that they reacted this way because of jealousy because I did nothing else to uh, insinuate that we weren't friends anymore or that I had betrayed them. But all of a sudden, this girl Cassie and this girl uh, Lalisha, I think was her name, these two girls were my friends and they decided that I was a stupid cunt and started talking behind my back that I was a slut and a bitch and oh, a princess or something. Uh, and Lalisha even went as far as uh, s spray painting on my parents' white picket fence, which is funny that I did have. Um, that I'm a, a princess bitch or something like that. It was ridiculous and my, my mom just like painted over the fence and she made me paint over the fence too. Uh, it was stupid. I had to fucking waste part of my summer doing that and it was really hot out in the summer when I was doing that. I was like, nah, I don't want to do this, but I had to do it anyway because I was helping my mom and because it was partially, uh, my parents thought that it was partially my fault <laughs> because I must have done something, right? No one would just do that out of nowhere. But it felt like my getting popular and my getting gaining popularity because I was like beautiful quote unquote um kind of made them detest me for some odd reason it was very weird it was like it could only be jealousy right like I literally did nothing I was always supportive of Cassie I fucking saw her as a mini me I molded her you know <laughs> in in my vision and I loved that girl I thought she was amazing um I like bought her clothes and we went shopping and I hung out with her all the time and I you know supported her when she had issues with boys and I told her she was beautiful I had no I didn't even see why she would do that and later on she claims that like she's sorry and she didn't mean to do that and she don't know why she didn't know why she did it so to me that only meant that she got a little you know tinge of jealousy or something and that was the issue so that was like my first real vision into the fact that people can do crazy things because they are jealous obviously I get the the random haters uh, in my comments who you know I would assume uh, part of the part of the reason why they do it or part of the reason why some of them do it is because they're jealous of something of me Which is weird. I don't know. I feel like it's hard to talk about this topic uh, candidly without sounding uh, Without sounding like I'm full of myself But really I'm just being honest about the things that happened factually and you know you I'm like throwing around the words beautiful or sexy or hot or whatever because that's what you know people in society see me as a uh, a majority of the time and that's just a statistic and not actually anyone's you know it's not me showing you guys what I think of myself it's what people say in the comments more often than not or what people have said to me more often than not and uh, it's something that society sees as beautiful at the moment a majority of the time so obviously everyone has their own vision of what they see as beautiful or what they see as perfect and some people might think I'm cute rather than beautiful because they like brunettes who are natural or something but anyway um, a lot of people do get pissed off when someone is viewed as beautiful and they might not be viewed as beautiful or they're be viewed as beautiful but I'm viewed as competition and that kind of thing happens all the time. Uh, so in modeling I had this friend named April and she was the most insecure girl I've ever met and she is one of the reasons that solidified why I don't like hanging out with girls very much because every time I hung out with her she would tell me how jealous she is of my face, how jealous she is of certain physical features and I felt like the whole time I was talking to her I was trying to put pieces back together of a girl and ensure that she was beautiful and to the point where it felt like it was, you know, coming from a place of 
ingenuineness because I just had to keep telling her, no, you're beautiful, you're great, you look great, you're beautiful. Nah, I'm not that pretty. Nah, you're just as pretty or prettier. And like, I felt like I just had to keep doing that to the point where we didn't really get anywhere. Like she uh, was one of the only uh, nerdy gamer models I've ever known. Uh, she played World of Warcraft with her photographer husband or boyfriend or whatever it was. I think it was boyfriend because they're not together anymore. I don't know. I don't really talk to her. But um, we never really got to the part where we would talk about games or do anything else. It would just be like her being like that and then her being quiet around me and then her bringing it up later. And like she, she was like, it's really cute when a girl's like that, but it's hard for me to relate to someone or talk to someone or have a meaningful conversation with someone who is so reserved and so shy and just keeps, you know, trying to you know, put attention to the fact that she's insecure about her looks, which is something that I've never really understood. And I feel like even with my best girlfriend, who is a girl I met from esports, she will still be like, oh, you're jealous randomly, or like, let's talk about this, or oh, you got it so great, or... And it, it just feels like a man would never walk up to another man and be like, oh my god, you're so pretty, and then expect a response like, oh no, you're pretty! It's always just like, hey man, that's a really cool hat. Yeah, got it at Macy's. Kind of like that. It's, there's no like, ego boosting going on or like weird insecure conversations that are just awkward because you know we're not really supposed to be friends we're supposed to be catty to each other and that's how I feel that women conduct themselves so much so that I feel like they lack intellectual stimulation because all they're doing is thinking about their place in the in society as like in the in the wrong the dichotomy of society that's all they're thinking about you know and, and it's kind of sad to me that I feel like a lot of girls are raised that way so that they don't get into nerdy things, so that they don't geek out on certain things that they find out that they love because they're so preoccupied with other thoughts that are way less intellectually stimulating, I guess. I don't know. So, um, that was one of the things that happened to me that is kind of related to jealousy, I guess. This is kind of going nowhere. I just feel like talking today and I hope this isn't annoying or boring that I just want to talk today. I feel like talking. I think I'm going to do two vlogs probably to be ahead and because I'm just talkative today. So, um, of course, like I said before, there are the girls that when you walk by, they're like, ah, oh my god, and then they whisper to their husbands or, you know, there are people like staring if I'm wearing something sexually provocative or if I'm not, but more so if I have, you know, big cleavage. Uh, there was this, I went to Fry's recently because I had to pick up, what was it that I had to pick up? Uh, I don't remember what it was. Something so that I could play some game, probably like a controller or a or a charger for my PS4 controller, the cable. I'm not sure. I don't remember exactly. But um, I was standing in line, and um, they have like a lot of registers, so they have someone uh, directing you to which register is open. And uh, the lady who was gonna turn around and direct me to the open register was like, "Oh my god!" And when she saw my boobs, and it's like so funny how people react. Um, sometimes it's not out of jealous it's just out of surprise because I don't often see uh, people who are so fine with having you know big fake tits out or having you know cleavage or having a short skirt and stuff like that so it can it can be kind of funny how much people stare and how much people say things about people that they don't even know and it's kind of emulated in uh, the comment section of YouTube It's pretty much just like a big forum of what people in public are thinking but never say to me like I have never had a problem uh, when I'm playing, uh, when I'm going to a StarCraft tournament, or if I'm playing Magic, I've done, I've gone to like at least a hundred Magic tournaments, and I've never had anyone uh, treat me poorly in any way. But I'm sure half the people, like I'll look at comments on certain uh, Magic forums about women in gaming, and there will be comments about me and my playmat, and like all of the things that I do that are sexual, and people having, you know distaste for that, but I never see that in public because nobody is open enough to say anything other than behind my back where I can barely hear them and I'm not going to turn around and sock them because I'm not ghetto, like, right? Um, and I find that quite funny and it doesn't bother me really, so I haven't really had to deal with it. I basically just, you know, try to let people know that I have no ill will toward them and that there's no problems with them and I and that I, you know, respect everyone's opinions but that they shouldn't push their morals on me and that my, you know, openness with sexuality and my hobby of making myself look better is not anything that's directed toward other women. I'm not trying to hurt you by doing that. I'm trying to make the best of my life and the best of what I want out of my life by doing that and it doesn't affect anyone else and it, I'm not comparing myself to others constantly and I feel like that's a huge character flaw that a lot of women have which is just comparing themselves to other people constantly rather than actually bettering themselves in their own image, which is kind of something that, it's like a life goal that you have to 
You have to learn that, that that's more important than worrying about what other people are doing. Um, my last thing that I want to talk about, which is probably going to be the most interesting to you guys, is uh, my stint with a guy who was married. Um, now, this is kind of a weird story because uh, I know Jesus watches my vlogs and he'll probably talk about it and it's funny, but uh, he knows the guy. Uh, when I first got into magic, there was this guy, uh, he's a teacher. And I don't give a fuck about it anymore talking about what's going on because I think he was honest to his wife, so it's not something I need to hide anymore. Uh, but he was a teacher and I had a crush on him and I don't know what it was. He wasn't, he's not my type, but I randomly get crushes on people who are not at all my type and I feel like um, it probably stems from me being more open to the more visceral, visceral reactions to like smells or types of things. Like people talk a lot about how genetics and biology, like a certain smell or a certain uh, pheromone that you give off will attract other people. Maybe I'm more open to that because I'm more sexual, so I will be attracted to people who are not necessarily my taste. But um, I was attracted to him for a while and I'm not anymore. Like when I look at him, I'm like, what did I see in him? But that's kind of how you feel when you like have a crush on, you know, the overweight teacher in high school. Like everyone has a weird crush where they're like, why did I like that person? Like even Jay tells me about like a crush that he had on his uh, sister's friend who was like really weird or smelled bad or something. I don't remember. But uh, everyone has a crush like that. And you guys should post down in the comments about yours because I find stuff like that in like entirely hilarious. If you guys just have a crush on a random person who you're like, oh, why did I have a crush on them? That's kind of a funny phenomenon, but it happens to me all the time. Uh, so I had a crush on this guy, and I think maybe it was because he was a teacher and that's on my bucket list, or because he acted as though he was a teacher to ma in magic to me. Like we would go and play test stuff, and I would always come on to him a little bit, and I think he knew that I liked him. But we went to Vancouver GP, uh, which is a Grand Prix for magic. It's a big event with like that, uh, I think it was over, I think it was like 3,000, no, was it hundreds or thousands? I don't remember how many people were there. It was a lot of fucking people. Uh, and we went out drinking um, afterwards and I ended up sitting on his lap. He ended up picking me up and like, I was really drunk so I don't remember 100% of this, but he ended up like picking me up and being like, this is how I would have sex with you or something and like bouncing me around. It was really weird. And then at the end of the night, he ended up uh, not going home with me because of, you know, there was some serendipity where a, f a friend of mine came and said he would walk me home instead and that worked out much better because I'm very glad I didn't do anything with him. But um, after that, he had to, he stopped talking to me altogether. He stopped messaging me on Facebook. Uh, he actually unfriended me on everything. Uh, he wouldn't respond to me on League of Legends and it was, I was like, what's going on? And then I found out that his, he went home, felt really bad and told his wife everything that had happened. And uh, she freaked out and ended up telling him he has to switch uh, magic stores that he goes to on Friday. We're not allowed to talk anymore. And we ended up not talking for a very long time until I went to a modern tournament, which back then was a format nobody thought I played. So I went there and he ended up being there. We ended up playing against each other um, and I lost. I was playing Merfolk and he was playing like Storm or something red. Um, and it was kind of funny that we had to interact and he was just like... <laughs> Like, I can't talk to you. It was really weird, but it's funny that she ended up showing up at uh, one of our last events together, too. Like, he threw a party or something at a uh, magic tournament for a friend going away or something. And we ended up going to the same place, and she came and, like, stood around and gave me the stink eye for, like, ever. And I'm like, you know how bad it makes you look that... Like, I understand being insecure about this, and I understand being like, you can't talk to her anymore in a professional... Or in a personal capacity, because you know, the relationship has gone a little bit too far and you obviously will do things drunk with her that I am not appreciative of and it's breaking my trust. But to tell someone that they can't talk to anyone anymore again and like control their lives like that, that's how monogamy works. Like he wanted to do something with me, it was very clear. And his wife put her foot down and said, I'm going to control your life like you are a fucking dog because I am insecure about this certain situation and I don't trust you. And obviously he gave her a little bit of a reason not to trust but at the same time, it's like, you know, don't make agreements that you can't honor and you don't act like a stupid bitch afterwards. Like, get in control of your emotions and realize that, of course, your husband is going to lust after other women and it's going to be temptation, but that you need to trust him and that if you don't trust him or he doesn't want to do this, you guys either need to break up or make a new contract where you can sleep with whoever you want and he can sleep with whoever he wants. And it's not more of like a controlling situation. But anyway, uh, that was, mm, that's pretty much all of my stories of women with jealousy. Oh, did I tell, okay, so I made a video entitled, if you want to Google it, uh, or find it on whatever. Uh, I made a video once called, uh, Bitchy Mom Hates Boobs, I think it was. Bitchy Mom Hates Boobs. It's got a lot of views. Um, 
It was about this woman. Uh, I was hanging out with my friends at uh, Red Robin after a magic tournament, and um, there was this woman with her kids who was like staring at me and hating on me. And she called over the the waitress, and I was just wearing like like this. It was just like this, like something you can wear in public, and there's no problem. Called over a waitress, and the waitress came over and said, "Can you please cover your cleavage because uh, this woman is uncomfortable?" And she was like really apologetic, like, "Oh my god, I'm so sorry." And I actually got a twenty dollar uh, Red Robin gift card and a Red Robin shirt out of it because she was like, "Here, if you want to put on the shirt, you can, but I just have to come over and let you know that I notified you because that's you know." I don't want to make this customer mad at us and never come back, but I feel really sorry. I don't know what her problem is. She's crazy. You look great, by the way, and that's how she acted, and I thought that was so hilarious. But um, on a serious note, okay, this is going to be a really long video. Nobody's going to watch it, but it's okay. On a serious note, I was watching today videos about uh, SS Sniper Wolf and how she's a fake gamer, and I don't have an opinion on the subject because I feel like a lot of data can be interpreted a lot of different ways, and if someone wants to bring you down, if someone doesn't like you, they definitely can make convincing arguments against you, and maybe she made a couple of mistakes where she, you know, had her husband play a game or two, or her husband did some amazing shit, and she was like, you know what, we should upload this, and I'll put commentary over it, and it'll make for great content. And that doesn't necessarily mean that she's a huge, stupid slut that should kill herself, like everyone acts. And it seems like everyone just jumps on a bandwagon and tries to ruin someone's career over something so frivolous, and it's, it's kind of scary, you know? Like, what if one day someone comes up with something convincing and ruins everything I've worked for, everything I'm passionate about? You know, it's, I empathize with her because it would be very painful to me, and people are talking about how she's deleting comments or, you know, copywriting videos, and it's like, I understand that. You're slandering her, and you don't have the full story. You can't because you're not close enough to her. Why do you have so much animosity towards a person you don't even know? You act like you are the the proprietor of all of the gaming community and you know what's best for them so let's you know eradicate some person who is trying to make a living off of something they most certainly love because otherwise she could have been a stripper she could have been anything you know she's beautiful why the fuck not and it's it's very sad to me to see that and like people say of course she blah 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 and you know x and y because otherwise blah 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 and those statements are so stupid to me because that's your perspective on things. That's how you would handle things. That's not necessarily the whole story, and that's not necessarily how someone else would hand handle it. And it, it's really ridiculous that someone was so jealous of the fact that she's a beautiful girl who's making money off of gaming that they decided to make a long videos that take a lot of work just to discredit her. And it's like, it's not your job to do that. If, she, if she's obviously not creating content that's worth viewing, people will stop viewing it. But people find it interesting. And I've watched one video of hers, and it was one talking about um, how she was either, she was going to get something at GameStop or she was working at GameStop, I don't know what the fuck. But uh, the way she talked, it seemed like she is a true gamer that has been playing games for a long time. And I've always thought it was stupid that the first person shooter girls uh, just voice over gameplay and then act like 100% there's no way that she's not playing it. You know, like I thought that seemed fake that they never have any live gameplay and all of my gameplay is live and I stream and everything. But at the same time, you know, whatever, maybe that's the way the FPS community works. I know there are a lot of men who make content where they don't show their faces, they don't show live gameplay, and they just talk over it. And nobody's, like, trying to discredit them. Nobody's trying to ruin their livelihood or make it so that they don't make any more money. And it's just, if you don't like something, don't support it. That's, that's how life works. Don't let your jealousy take over you in an emotional way that makes you spend a lot of time doing something against someone else when really you should be focusing on making yourself better or following your dreams. Like, if you made your own YouTube channel and started that up and put that much work into editing your own gameplay, you would probably actually get somewhere and make at least a few dollars on it because, you know, it makes so much more sense than just... Not only does it seem like you're trying to piggyback off of the, you know, by using her pictures and her name, a lot of people have done this to me too to try to say I'm a fake gamer girl or I, I'm too slutty to be a gamer or something, like there's some kind of perfect vision of a gamer and if you stray from that you can't like games or some stupid shit doesn't make any sense trying to you know pigeonhole me into some dumb fucking shit I don't know but like you're using my pictures my body my stuff and whoring me out to get views that's pretty much all you're doing so you're doing the same thing I'm doing except for you're not me and that makes it like 10 times worse like what the fuck some guy taking my modeling pictures and making people click on it because they see a hot blonde or whatever they're like oh click that's cool that's interesting and then talking about me it's like how, how are you not an attention whore? Make your own fucking content. Like, make money and, you know, get fans off of, you know, being funny, not just 
using other people's shit and talking about them and, you know, trying to discredit them. It seems very attention whore-ish and, like, the actual version of attention whore, not like, I like my looks and I look the way I do so I'm talking into a camera, not that. Uh, like, actually using other people's fame to get more famous yourself, it's kind of... It's, I feel sad for them, but I also feel sad for people like Sniper Wolf who, who have probably gotten a view hit because of it, you know? Like, because gullible people actually believe the stuff that's going on or it's just awful. Like, what are you accomplishing? You're accomplishing negative things in the world and you shouldn't do that. So I've been talking way too long. 25 minutes is a long time. Uh, Jay started another game of League before we start streaming and I feel like he's probably almost done so I'm gonna hurry this up uh, so I can do another vlog before I go. But thank you so much for watching. That's, um... My, my view on everything from monogamy to Sniper Wolf, and very little about jealous girls, but that's how my vlogs are, just babbling. Let me take a selfie. Bye guys.